Hark the bardic paladin Who sings and plays again He tells the tales of glory And weaves a magic story He'll join you at your table And ask you to share a fable Heroes of humble origin Villains who must be fought again No matter their skill or prowess The people in life are countless so we pray you heed our request. Enjoy this tale of sidekicks and sidequests. Sidequests and sidequests and sidequests. Episode 140 Goobles Goob Horseradish, the Cobbler of Lifting Shoes. Welcome to Sidekicks and Side Quests, the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that helps to put humans back into humanity and breathe life into your campaign NPCs with backstory and bravado. That's right, we're building a world, one character at a time. I am your host, Kurt Krenwelgi, the Bardic Paladin, and I'll be joining Avataha's table in the Levitating Platter. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Sidekicks and Side Quests, the best unofficial Dungeons and Dragons podcast, in my humbly biased opinion. I've got an awesome guest for you this week, but before I reveal who we are speaking with today, I gotta leave you in suspense with the ad read. This episode is brought to you by Plus One EXP and their brand new RPG Zine Club. Zine Club is a monthly membership subscription service featuring fresh zines from emerging and expanding creators across the globe. It's our way of inviting GMs, players, and zine lovers everywhere to invest more intentionally in the creative community. It's crowdsourced support without crowdfunding. So this service offers uh, monthly releases that they put out in two 20 to 44 page saddle stitch zines. Three different flavors. Take your pick from story zines, adventure zines, and all of the zines. You can pick your format of print and digital, or just get digital only for your favorite titles. Join the Clubhouse Discord section of the Plus One EXP community on Discord. Get the best prices guaranteed from your subscription uh, that you're going to get each month. You get a private subscription portal where you can manage your subscription, add products, or change your information, change your frequency monthly, every other month, something else. You pick how often you want these new titles to arrive. You only get what you want. And if you miss a month, why, you can always go back and add a title to your recent month's order. Get an annual surprise each February after your first anniversary. Get access to special content with interviews, how to play videos, special content for Zine Club titles. Get a free pizza if you fill out one of the RPG Zine Club passports and redeem it for a free pizza at events where Tony is present himself. You're going to get access to new and known designers, the best voices from across the RPG design community. And know that Plus One EXP and RPG Zine Club curate their zines based on community interest and feedback to help you discover your new favorite creators. There's a DIE focus because Plus One is committed to championing diversity, inclusion, and equity in their projects. Creators with diverse experiences make our community better. So Zine Club prioritizes creating equity for all of our creators. And it's more than a purchase. Your subscriptions will let us invest more heavily in our print partners and provide them with potentially life-changing support by consolidating scores or hundreds of purchases as the club grows. So, if you want to learn more, I would recommend that you go to the website, rpgzine.club. Again, rpgzine.club. And uh, if you want, go to plus1exp.com. And when you're buying uh, stuff on that site, beard balms or lip balms or beard RPGs or whatnot, and you need a discount code at checkout, be sure to use the code Randolph, R-A-N. D-O-L-P-H at checkout and get some savings on your purchase at no extra cost to you. Again, website is plus one exp.com and the zine club website is rpgzine.club. All right. And uh, without further ado, I turn the microphone over to my guest and I ask, hello, mystery contestant. Would you care to introduce yourself? Tell us who it is that you are and what is it that you do? 
Um, hi, thank you for having me. I'm Eva, Eva Teha. I work on designing tabletop RPGs, mainly PBTA. It's just the thing I like the most. Wonderful. Yes. Powered by the apocalypse, if I understand that correctly. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is a very cool name if you stop to think about it. Yes, it, it sounds very metal. It sounds uh, very cool for sure. And uh, yeah, how we first connected is uh, we follow each other on X uh, and you have like a new a new game. You messaged me and we're like, hey, I've got this new game out. And, you know, would you help, you know, showcase it off? So, yeah. Can you tell us more to, uh, about what it is that you just launched successfully for you? Uh, yes. Release three days ago. Um, Spine of Eternity, Everybody Wants to Be a Star, it's a Powered by the Apocalypse. Um, it is a modern fantasy game about adventures in this original setting that I made called the Spine of Eternity, about which is this world where fame is power and, and the most famous gets to live forever among the stars after they pass on. It's very based on like this idea where like, there's a lot of settings where divinity gains power from the belief of the, the faithful and basically just asks, what, what if this applied to everything and everyone? Yeah, and, and uh, I, I can see it here on, on your X page, you know, it's the pin thing. And uh, as you said, three days ago of, of the time of this recording, uh, yeah, you've launched it and uh, it looks super cool. Um, yeah. And and if I understand Powered by the Apocalypse, you, you don't have as many stats to keep track of. It's like pretty, how, like, how does it how does it work if we're going to like, you know, if you make a character and you, you sit down to play with your group? Yeah, the the original Power by the Apocalypse, Apocalypse World has five stats actually. Most games do range from um four to five, sometimes three or or even six, like D D. Mm -hmm. uh, my game actually does also has six, but they they generally range have a very small range between like minus two and plus three. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's no, generally there are no score modifiers, so they're more straightforward. Okay. Okay. So yeah, straight, straight modifiers. Um, and the, okay. So we're not getting too noodly like we do in, in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and then, um, so your quest then in this particular game, um, is you're trying to seek uh, divinity by the end of it, essentially, if you work your way from low level to, to high level. Yeah, in the sense that um, you're you're trying to earn fame. I think um, One Piece is a somewhat. I think it helps about to have an idea. You know, as the story goes on, they start like getting higher and higher bounties on their heads, mm -hmm. and it's sort of this the same thing. You know your play as travelers who go from place to place and your, your main goal really is just you got to make a name for yourself you got to have got to have everyone thinking about you and and then like yeah and eventually you know everybody anyone who's just cared about a lot after their death just ascends to the stars which is somewhat metaphorical and somewhat literal the stars are, are basically like divinity and then the things they do is somewhat similar to divinity in D, D. in fact like they offer power to the living and with hopes that you know basically as an investment in mm -hmm. hopes that this will in turn give them fame back and since, you know, we did make the mention of Dungeons and Dragons, I feel like it's a pretty good segue into the next question. But do you currently or have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons before? Um, I played a couple times. It's very, very few. Like, I think a lot of people have played it way more than I have. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I have a bit of a curious story with tabletop RPG. I was just 
I was a bit indifferent about playing it. But mm. and then I got really into the adventure zone when I was a teenager, which is um, um an actual play podcast of D D. Yeah. And then they started breach exploring each other's systems and one of this was urban shadows and like other PBTAs. And that just made me curious. And I looked it up and I was just I was fascinated by how the systems worked and it was just like I had this huge craving, like I have to make something like this. Yeah, so you got inspired uh, by listening to the Adventure Zone, and that's what then led you into your uh, your design uh, career, as it is uh, within the within the hobby. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel like I always just was very interested in designing, and then when I just I saw you know the engine of the Power by the Apocalypse and how like how it could be used to make things. I just, I really just, I had to make stuff. I just had this, you know, I really wanted to make stuff with it. Well, here on this podcast that's called Sidekicks and Side Quests, we like to ask, uh, you know, the important questions. Uh, so this first of those, do you happen to have a favorite NPC or sidekick character, whether they be from an RPG, a video game, movie, film, television, literature, etc. And why is this character your favorite sidekick or your favorite NPC? Um, I thought about that question. I I came up with like a couple answers. I think I think one of my probably what I would say is Penny from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I don't think I don't know if she counts as an NPC because that she's basically a main character. Mm. But I just really like her side quest. This whole like um, I guess spoilers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> how she effectively founded this group with good intentions, but now it's out of her control. So she, you know, um, she doesn't hire, but you know, she requests from the player character to take down her own group it's just i just thought it was so cool yeah the classic thing of like i started this thing for good and noble intentions and then it quickly spiraled out of my control because you know someone came in and took over or just like things got more and more intense and i got left behind in the dust kind of a thing and we got to take it down because it's too corrupt or whatever yeah that's cool yeah i haven't ventured beyond pokemon blue I rocked Pokemon <laughs> Blue back in the day, and that's that's about as far as I got. So that's nice. That's nice to hear that you know this is the Pokemon thing is uh, still hanging around. That's that's <laughs> nice to know. And then sort of same question: What happens to be your favorite side quest? For, again, same sort of criteria uh, or B plot element, whether it's from RPG, movie, film, television, uh, literature, etc. And why is this uh, B plot element or side quest your favorite? Um, see, I, I thought about this a bunch, and one thing that came to mind was two different quests in Final Fantasy XIV, and, well, they have one thing that connects them, and the first one is, like, a weaver crafting quest, where basically there is this noble lady who wants to, I don't quite remember, but basically, like, she is in love with this knight and her mother doesn't support her ma like her her dating then mm -hmm. later revealed that like her dad was also a knight and and that's part of why her mother doesn't support that because she doesn't mm -hmm. want her daughter to lose her boyfriend the same way mm -hmm. and the other one is a blacksmith quest where basically this woman has to like I guess, properly learn how to make swords to earn the respect of her father to be able to date the one she wants. And so, like, I, I realized, like, oh, yeah, I really like quests that have romance involved. <laughs> not really, not even, like, what the the players, but just, like, I, you know, I in love with this person. You, adventure, I need you to help me with something. If you can do this to me or that, then I will be able to be with my beloved. You like matchmaker side quests. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> that like, is a way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It's like 
you you're cute and you're cute there's some you know some issue that you're stuck on well if there's something that i can do to help get that sorted then sure i'll do the side quest to get you 10 flowers or uh help you learn how to you know forge a weapon or uh, uh yeah or like give a rousing speech uh to convince the the begrudging parent or whatever yeah uh and then the way that we round out the personal interview section of the podcast episode uh eva what are you passionate about and why um what am i passionate about um partially game design i like you know playing games and like i said i really like systems i like thinking about like i play the game and i already like thinking how each piece connects mm -hmm. sometimes there's going to be an upcoming game and I'll watch the trailer and I really want to you know, understand how the gameplay works just from those little bits that we saw from the trailer. I guess, yeah, these gameplay systems is something that I am very invested about. Well, I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, you, you're, you know, you're creative and you're also, uh, you know, logical and thinking and, you know, you see this, uh, you know, this awesome game in front of you and you're excited to play it. And yet you're also like, you know, you got your thinking cap on. You're like, man, how does this work? How can I how can I know how it works? But then also, you know, what can I do creatively to then, you know, do my own variation on it or or how would I do this better or do this different? So is it, you you feel like you do that uh, in 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 what you do? Yeah, yeah, very much. You know, just I want to be able to see the full picture and like see each piece and how they connect so that yeah i can use it as a reference in the future or think like yeah oh i don't quite agree with how they did this i would do this differently or that like oh this is very interesting i never thought of that is there something that uh you you watched or you played uh that maybe factored into this uh this project that you just you know recently unveiled the spine of eternity is you know i know it's powered by the apocalypse and so it has its own structure with how you make a game but i'm just curious you know is there something that you saw that you were like oh that's cool that's interesting but how would i do it my way and then that you know became spine for eternity or spine of eternity there there is something it was a um it was a book in fact it was like first it started with the setting and then this um this a book called this web novel called Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint that is also has a lot of similar things with like meta narrative in the like meta narrative in a way that exists in the world and characters have to deal with it and this is very interesting thing like yeah in there they also have the constellations that sponsor the main characters and give them power which is very much where I got the idea of the stars. And mm -hmm. you can see that because like there, I sort of disagree, like, wow, I, I disagree that they would be constellations. I believe they would be stars. Mm. Interesting. So individual stars, not necessarily like a collection of stars. Is it is? Well, I mean, maybe this is more to find out in the game, but is there is there a benefit if like a collective of stars got together and decided to empower someone that way or is that like oh that's like some big uh you know evil plot like oh a bunch <laughs> of stars are getting together to give one person power or something that is actually something i didn't quite explore because i guess they talk a lot about the stars but in a way they're not that present in the game because the game mm. is about the struggles of the living above everything Ah, okay. And so there definitely would be, you know, groups of stars, which is not quite something I explore. See, now my my brain's thinking of like, oh, what would I do if I were running a game of uh, Spine of Eternity is maybe I'd have like some bad guy that's like, oh, I, I get power from one star. That's great. But what if I got power from like 10 stars or 12 stars <laughs> or however many make up a constellation? And he's like picking them out and he's like trying to like siphon power or something like that. And again, that would factor into, you know, some sort of commentary of whatever's going on among the living. Um, I don't know. That might be kind of an interesting thing. Maybe an expansion, uh, some sort of uh, like expansion uh, thing you decide to add to the game or something. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting. I, 
I I think a lot about the setting in general. Like I think a lot about other games I could make in the setting, like smaller games that are more focused in different things. And I it it is I think it is it does come off a little wild to me that I created this setting and it's just so fitting to me that I every idea I have I can just mold it in a way that fits it. Right. I feel like that's kind of how I am as a DM is like, you know, I'll have my players, uh, you know, contribute something cool. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Like that totally changes my thinking. And now I have to figure out how to like mold this whole interesting thing in into the the story of my world to make it all work. And so, yeah, I don't I think that's I think that's a strength of us as uh, creators is being able to collaborate and get those ideas and inspirations then, you know, you know, because we're passionate about our, our babies and we're like, <laughs> what more can we do to like make this thing even cooler? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah, I have just a lot of like different ideas. I mean, everybody has ideas. It's just very, only a fraction of them, you know, get to actually come out and just fun. Like, Oh, what if, I did think, what if I use these aspects like this or like that? Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, we have uh, gotten through uh, the first part of the show, the personal interview section. And I think it's time to head into some NPC creation. Yeah. And NPC creation is brought to you by you, our podcast audience and our patrons from Patreon. I would have a drink with me, but I uh, neglected to gla- grab one, and that's okay. Uh, but I will raise a toast regardless uh, to our queen of the Patreon, Miss Goblin Katie, aka K- Katie Downey, uh, RIP Stella, best dog, as well as our other wealthy tier patrons, including Anson Jablinski and good old mom and dad. We say cheers. So again, uh, the Patreon uh, sponsors that I have all get to introduce uh, what's called an element of chance uh, to our random tables that we have. So some of the responses uh, that we might get to use here today may have been contributed by a Patreon supporter. And you can uh, do that simply by donating at least $2 or more a month. So if you want to learn more details and not have me gab on and on and on and on and on and about it, uh, then you should just go to the show notes below. Uh, go to my podcast website or just go directly to patreon.com forward slash sidekicks and side quests. Find out uh, all the accommodations that we have awaiting for you. Help us to grow and expand our operations in the semi-plane and worlds beyond. And Kofi, if you don't like Patreon, I've got Kofi too. So, cha-cha. All right. Uh, now that that little uh, spiel is out of the way, now comes the part uh, where we get to make up a character, the uh, the sidekick uh, portion of the podcast, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. So before we started uh, hitting all the record buttons and checking to make sure everything was good, you said that you wanted to randomize a character today. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So we've got all our tables here at the ready. You've got your dice and uh, and we can begin. And so the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the name of our character? And if you'd like to roll a d20, we'll figure out who we get. I will. And it is a six. A six. Okay. Your answer was provided by previous guest, uh, the VTuber Mandy Quinn. Goobles Goob Horseradish. So we have a character that's named Goobles Goob for a nickname or short. And then last name Horseradish. Uh, so we're off to a winning start thus far. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then the next question we get to ask ourselves is what is the ancestry of our character uh, of, of fair Goobles? Let's roll a D 100 or two D tens uh, to figure out what we get. And, you know, I do allow rerolls. So if it gets something and you're like, I can't, there's no way I can conceptualize this. Then we can, we can always try again. Um, okay, uh, I did quickly Google this here. It, it, I got a total of 87. 87, okay. Uh, so this would be, ooh, interesting. Okay, you have a choice. Uh, so a Leonin, 
or tabaxi. Uh, so, of course, the Leonin being like the lion anthropomorphic uh, peoples or tabaxi, which are like the cat people. So if you're cool with that choice, you could choose between a Leonin or a tabaxi for our fair uh, goobles or goob. I do. I do like cat people, actually. That's that's a lovely one. OK, so you want to go tabaxi. Perfect. OK. Uh, all right. And then let's see what is ah, what is the job or occupation, the role in society that a goob would have? Let's roll just a regular D10. Okay, um, it is a nine. Nine. Ooh, okay. All right, excellent. So this is a response that was submitted by our Patreon supporter, my mom, my lovely mom, Pam <laughs> Krenwogi. Thank you, mom. Uh, so Goob is a cobbler of lifting shoes. Apparently, they're shoes that make you float. So uh, makes enchanted magical shoes that lets you moonwalk in the air, I guess. Uh, but cobbler oh. of lifting shoes uh, was the response. And then let's see the next thing we get to roll for before we get to take a small pause on the dice rolling. Pause, cat, ha ha ha. Uh, age range r- random roll will be a D8. It is a six. Elder. Okay, so Goob is kind mm-hmm. of like further along in life. Okay, all right. So now that we've got at least these first uh, four clarifying details. So when you hear Goobles, Goob, Horseradish, Tabaxi, Cobbler of Lifting Shoes, that's an elder. Uh, can you describe the physical appearance of this Tabaxi, of this character? Um, first thing that came to mind was actually, I do have an older cat. So I imagine like almost like a lion's mane like not quite just Mm -hmm. yeah like uh the the fur is just you know old it's a bit just very much like it doesn't look quite healthy there's like uh there's definitely a couple um scratches on the ears Mm. and yeah just, just uh yeah a couple just like yeah, very much an old cat. So like yeah, with a big mane. Or just, yeah, with a <laughs> mane. Just most cats cats don't have one, so having one is already a noteworthy thing. Mm-hmm. And I imagine like more not necessarily really a robe, but not more more like comfortable clothes. Okay, like I am just sort of imagining the retired mentor idea almost like yeah martial okay. artist mentor in the the mountains but right now yeah just wearing just comfortable robe is there a coloration to this tabaxi's fur like you know you i know you just said that you have an old cat yourself i have two old cats but um is there like a particular uh fur pattern or coloration that you imagine for goob um i would i, I would go with the a tabby cat's patterns and, and the colors yeah like like slightly gray a little bit yellow okay yellow eyes with, oh yellow but very, eyes. like but i think much more to the gray side like Cats don't mm. quite gray, but you know That's when you true. want to compromise something, you right. always add. Right, they start mm-hmm. like thinning out because I know one of my cats, she like right behind like her eyes, but in front of her ears, it's like she has her fur is like very thin there. So I imagine like that's like her way of going bald. Uh, in yeah, a way. yeah, yeah. My my cat has that a little bit too, a bit uh, thin. Um, thin fur spots. Okay, thin fur spots, tabby coloration, yellow eyes. Is Goob, Goobles, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so funny to say. Is Goob uh, like an old man uh, tabaxi, old lady tabaxi? Just, you know, I'm and I'm wondering the hands too, like a cobbler uh, yeah, of yeah. lifting shoes. Like, I wonder what goes into that operation. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Goobs is an old man. And yeah, the hands are... Probably very. I mean, they they have like very calloused. Mm. A lot of just 
a lot of manual working through many, many years. Mm. I, I don't know, I guess they brought also, they have uh, beings, tall <laughs> beings, I don't know. Oh, like uh, in their toes, you mean? Or like, they're, yeah. like, like okay. Is is he a sure. polydactyl? Maybe I, I know some cats are you know managed to have like extra fingers and stuff like that, and uh, I, I don't know any of that spark your imagination or anything. Yeah, I'm sure. I I don't know how the average tabaxi hens is imagined. I, I feel like yeah. they're pretty humanoid, anthropomorphic. So I, you know, I feel like five, you know, f- well, f- four fingers and a thumb. Okay, it's five right. fingers, people. But yeah, four four fingers and a thumb. I feel like is pretty normal for most, uh, you know, humanoid creatures in D anD. d Yeah, yeah, I would probably go with that. Okay. Just kind of curious your thoughts, um, you know, because obviously it's D anD. d You can do what you want. Your lore can be different than what's written in the books. Um, but obviously a name like Goobles Goop Horseradish is not a typical tabaxi name. So is there a story uh, behind why old Goop uh, decided to go with that name? Is that like their given name or is that a name that they came up with when they moved to this community and decided to be a cobbler of these magical shoes? Mm, I thinking right now, I I have a bit of a... I, already like the kind of role this character plays in my mind okay so i do think that goops would be a nickname okay the, yeah like this the kind of nickname that like you like you come up with like your friends when you're young and like everybody has a nickname and then you uh, you you drift away from each other, but like you still you still keep that dear nickname with you. Mm-hmm. That's true. I I understand from the UK that that is very much a thing of like when you're in school, your classmates will give you some sort of nickname, and it's just a nickname that follows you your entire life. And it's like, you know, <laughs> look, uh, I'm not you know, Google's horseradish was like you know some sort of like uh like joke character or something that I made up one day in class. And it's like, I haven't been that wild and crazy guy, you know, since I was like a little kitten. Uh, And now I'm like this, you know, this uh, cobbler, I make these shoes, but it's yet people still just call me old Google's horseradish. And it's like, they won't let, they won't leave that alone. Uh, He has like a proper name, but it's like, Nope, only people want to call him Google's horseradish or goob. Yeah. Okay. Is there a story behind of what you think a Google's horseradish is? Is it like a particular kind of horseradish? Maybe? Um, I maybe, yeah, maybe they just really liked horseradish. <laughs> like, actually, yeah, the idea of, yeah, it is a kind of horseradish, and okay. Google just really liked it. Okay. So that's their nickname. Okay. So he was just eating a bunch of it one day. And so then they just started calling him that. And he's like, you know, I like it all right. Uh, but it's, yeah. it's not like my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, it's actually funny. If it's, yeah, it's not even their, his favorite or anything. It's just he likes it. And he was eating a bunch of it one day. And it's just like, okay, now this is your identity. <laughs> uh, oh, kids, they're so silly. Um, okay. And okay, so that's that's good to kind of understand like the 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 canon, the the backstory of our of our tabaxi. But now my question is the trade of cobbler of making lifting shoes. What what's the story behind that? Maybe it's it's necessary in the place where they live. Maybe having okay. lifting shoes is just is a necessity in that mm. region. Because it's like a lot of floating islands. Oh, floating islands. Okay, so then because you're just kind of like elevated up in the air, it's like you're just walking on air. Um, and it's easy enough to be able to walk from island to island or um, like the, like I'm imagining yeah. someplace like uh, like Venice, like the ghetto, the ghettos islands of Venice of like all these canals and stuff everywhere. And so people are just having these lifting shoes and they can just easily when they can't catch a gondola a boat or get on the bridge or whatever 
It's like, okay, I'll just use my lifting shoes and I'll just walk where I need to go and not worry about, uh, you know, dunking in the water or whatever. Yeah, 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 I guess, yeah, at least like Venice is better. Lift, I guess I was imagining more like a floating shoe, but yeah, lifting makes more sense as in like, you get to be a couple feet above the ground. Right. Yeah, it's like places like this, maybe like hard terrain, and maybe this isn't even where groups lives anymore, but they just kept the practice of making lifting shoes. Oh, okay. So he came from somewhere that where that was more necessary, but since that's his trade and he knows what he knows how to do that, then he just still makes those shoes. So you could be somewhere mundane, like, you know, if you're using Forgotten Realms, it's like, oh, I'm in Baldur's Gate. But it's like he's this weird tabaxi cobbler that makes lifting shoes, but like, you know, oh, the place where I needed that, uh, I don't necessarily need that here in Baldur's Gate, but I do look pretty cool. I can do some pretty sick dance moves uh, while I'm wearing these shoes uh, kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Okay. I like that a lot. I definitely know, you You know, uh, well, not that you know. I'm, I'm telling you now of a <laughs> place in my game where I could definitely uh, stick a character like this in my uh, Spelljammer Astral Sea setting. Um, I exactly had a place that has a reason why people don't walk on the ground so everyone i call them moon shoes uh because it's in the astral sea but literally they were mm -hmm. like shoes that lifted you up off the ground so you didn't make vibrations on the ground and everyone had to speak using common sign you could like make noise um like at least that couldn't be managed by magic of like uh you know dampening devices and stuff like that so that was a real fun challenge to invent that place and so i'm like oh Google's horseradish is just another guy who makes, uh, you know, moon shoes or lifting uh, shoes or whatever. So that's maybe where he came from. And now he's moved to he's retired, um, you know, to the mundane world. And he's settled in a, in a hamlet or a seaside town. And he's making these weird shoes. And people are like, we don't know what to do with these, but they seem cool and they, they look nice. And, you know, oh, I feel taller now. I'm I. I <laughs> All the ladies are wearing them, uh, giving the impression that they're taller. But when they lift up their skirts, it's like, oh, they're actually up off the ground by like a foot or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is a, a very interesting thing. And I guess there's a, a lot more thing that I think about, like, oh, maybe maybe they moved because the, their past memories with their friend group is just too mm. much and they need they need to go from a place where they don't have memories or he doesn't have memories off. <laughs> right. So, okay. So yeah, I, I, I feel like the goop, you know, might be kind of like fair enough for, he might be okay with that since that's part of the name, like a Google's horseradish um, is like, oh, I don't like hearing that. Like goop is fine enough uh, or goob <laughs> is fine enough. Um, or maybe he finally does go by like his proper tabaxi name, but people are like, Oh, there's a story behind that goob name. Uh, but okay. Um, okay, so we've got an idea of like who, how he looks physically and, you know, kind of a little bit more of his story. So with kind of all these considerations in mind, if you had to narrow down goob with three adjectives, what three adjectives would you choose? I imagine um, reluctant uh, because one, I imagine there's like, somebody who really wants to be taken in as a pupil and he's just like, no, I, I won't teach you the process, the, the techniques and mm. but I keep insisting, uh, reluctant that it's, it is hard to think of <laughs> adjectives. Yeah. Talented. Yeah. Fastidious. I, I don't know. I'm yeah. just thinking, I'm uh, just for one, I, I think patient, I think this is a job that demands a lot of patience i think yeah he also likes fishing and he just stays there mm, okay fishing yeah probably moved somewhere so we could actually fish too yeah yeah and i think um contemplative just ah. you have to know, looks at the distance and thinks mm. maybe maybe why did i get stuck like, with this dumb name <laughs> yeah Maybe more like solitary, you know. Oh, okay. Doesn't quite like company that much. Mm, okay, okay. So we've got reluctant. 
um, but we've got uh, patient, and then we have solitary or contemplative. Okay, very good. All right, so now we've got the three adjectives, so we've got an idea more of who Goob is as, as a character, and we get to go back to some dice rolling because I did promise that we would get to use the whole standard array of dice. So we like our NPCs to be able to have something cool on their person. So uh, what is going to be the valuable item that Goob has with him? This could be an item. It could be a piece of lore. It could be a secret, or it could be uh, an ideal or concept. So this is a combination roll where you roll a D4 first for the category and then a D6 for the particular thing. Okay. Um, the D4 is a four and the D6 Ooh. is a three. Ooh, okay. All right. So this is an ideal or concept. And this answer was suggested by previous guest, Kevin No hospitality so how does that factor in you know we we talked about how he was reluctant and solitary uh and patient but yet he really cares about being a hospitable sort of person or at least the idea of hospitality so how does that kind of factor into his character or you know really really makes him stand out i i kind of imagine that he values like business practice a lot like when doing deals in business he very you know focuses on you know the proper processes the proper you know the you know the hospitality the the patterns i'm forgetting the words it's just all the proper etiquettes etiquette okay okay you know, like he he makes good products and you know he holds himself to a high standard of quality Okay. Is his shop a very inviting place for customers to come and go? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, very inviting and comfortable place. I guess even like if there's any trouble going on, he makes sure to to solve it. But I guess in a way to still fit in the solitary part, it's like mm -hmm. this is you know Prof professionalism prof yeah it's just like okay i you know you are welcome here and i will treat you well but he there's a lack of um not personality but like of intimacy you know like this is all professional like somebody can could work there could like go there mm -hmm. every week but like wouldn't quite know goops as a person right just as a worker right so yeah okay so uh, in my head you know the 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 concept uh sounds very much kind of like um like like sort of eastern maybe in the concept of doing business so could be somewhere like south korea or japan or maybe even taiwan of like you know there is a uh, there is a protocol and there is like a form there is like a ritual if you will when it comes to to doing business or coming into my place of business you know so he cares very much for the form of it but as you were saying like because he's reluctant because he wants to be contemplative and he wants to be solitary because he's in his elder years it's kind of just like going through the motions um and not having, like you were saying, that degree of intimacy. Like, he's not going to open up to you and be like, well, let me tell you about how I got this silly name. He's just going <laughs> to, you know, you know, like, hey, did, these, did the shoes fit well? Okay, let me make sure I give him a good shine. Uh, you know, the, I do the laces right. Uh, you know, the, the magic is instilled in the shoes. And, you know, oh, give them a spin around and see how they, they go. And then like, oh, thank you very much. And then, okay, then he's, you know, the business uh, transaction is concluded, you leave. And now he's like, oh, great. Now I don't have to, I don't have to be <laughs> yeah. around people until the next person comes into my shop or whatever. Yeah, exactly like that. I mean, I was even saying, like, uh, I was picturing, like, you know, uh, old martial arts master, I guess, mm. partially because I've been watching a lot of, I've been watching a lot of Gundam and particularly this one. It is a Gundam retelling of Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Oh. Not to derail too much. So it had this, 
these tropes in my head. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so a Japanese retelling of like ancient Chinese history. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. All right, okay. So hospitality, okay. So uh, so goob is a uh, very hospitable, at least when it comes to business. Um, we'll, we'll see. Maybe you have to go visit him a few more times and get him to open up the old man. Like, I, you know, we love you, old guy. Like, we want to be your friend. And then maybe he could be like, oh, okay, all right, fine. But we like all of our NPCs to be able to offer up side quests. Uh, so what is a quest that Goob would be willing to offer uh, to player characters or, you know, to hire them or task them with doing something? If you want to roll for this, the last dice, a D12. Yep. It is a one. It is a one. Okay. Interestingly, another response from previous guest, VTuber Mandy Quinn. There is an interesting shadowy dog that is prowling the streets of the nearby town. What is this dog? So, old man, you know, being contemplative, and he's noticed this dog. What, what do you what do you think there do you think this is interesting? Kind of now it's kind of more of like a Jimmy Stewart rear window sort of a thing where he's like not ne not necessarily that um, you know, Goob has broken his leg and he can't. He's like, you know, he's not forced to stay in his house, but because he's a bit reluctant or he's contemplative, it, you know, maybe maybe it going into that hospitality thing, he's like you know, I'm I'm spending a lot of time making sure that my place of business looks good. Um, but he's just noticing this shadowy dog. I don't know. What do you think? Um, if if I'm allowed to, you know, expand on the definition of dog, I do have a neat idea. Oh, which is that you know the shadowy dog is a a pair of shoes he made that went awfully wrong. Oh. And and this is like, you know, I made this creature by accident. Maybe, you know, maybe I was really angry in that day and I was and and I wasn't doing uh. things properly. And this creature was created and I you know and he requests the player party to put it down. Oh, interesting. Okay, D taking it a little more uh, kind of like Frankenstein sort of a thing of like, oh, these shoes are like, do, now do they like project an aura that makes it look like a shadowy dog or is it a shadowy figure? Like, oh, there's a shadow walking around uh, yeah, in, in yeah. this pair of shoes or whatever. Yeah, I imagine like the shoes just in some way took a dog-like shape. Yeah, I really like this idea of like he made these shoes, but he didn't put the love in the process. Mm. And now the shoes are just he didn't with adhere hate. to hospitality. Yeah, mm. this, this is what happens when you don't adhere to the hospitality. This is why he's so insistent on it. Yeah. Okay. And now he created this prowling creature. Is it stalking him and the shop, or is it just stalking the town and like being menacing and? Uh, spooky. I I think it's just stalking the town in general. I I like the idea that if he could, he he could ignore this problem. Mm -hmm. This isn't he doesn't want to solve this because it's bothering him in specific, but because it's his responsibility. Mm -hmm. He caused this. He has to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like we're starting to get into the the sub questions of this side quest. So. Um, so, you know, this shadowy dog, this shadowy figure is like skulking around town and he wants you to go stop this, put it down because he explains what it really is. So what's going to be the reward for success in the side quest? Well, I, I feel like the more, most clear answer is he gives a pair of levitating shoes to everyone in the party. <laughs> okay. So everyone gets a pair of moon shoes, basically. Yeah, that that would be my my first my first thought. <laughs> okay, are you imagining that? Uh, well, let's see, because I know when I figured it out for my homebrew setting, I f I determined that something like uh, a pair of lifting shoes, you know, to keep you up off the ground, if especially if you needed to be in a place 
where these were commonplace, so like a common magic item. So they're not the most expensive shoes in the world, but they certainly don't come cheap to like a common peasant or something, if you will. So, I mean, not a not an ins- inconsequential sort of reward. And, you know, these are like well crafted. I don't I don't know. I don't know my shoe brands too much. Uh, I don't know. Is there like some <laughs> sort of comparable fancy shoe that you could be like, oh, this is like a p- getting a pair of like Air Jordans or like crisp premium Converse All Star sneakers or something like that? Yeah, you, that could be another another level, right? It's not. They're not just the the, the regular levitating shoes. These are just you know, masterfully crafted and they can, I don't know, give you some, like a charisma bonus in some sort, in some oh. way, like, oh. Advantage oh, on charisma persuasion checks or something like that? Yeah, like if you can, if somebody's impressed by your shoes, you could have a bonus like that. Okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's cool. You know, having like a, like a neat uh, item of clothing that just, you know, gives you, uh, an advantage on on something like that doesn't necessarily have to be magical um if if the party isn't interested in the lifting shoes then he could just he could make them a killer pair of shoes and uh they'll be the talking talking boots of the town or or whatever it is yeah i i've thought like you know it could be both like if if just a pair of lifting shoes is really not that much it could be like oh but these are masterfully crafted Mm. and people will be impressed by the their work or it could be like another bonus there you go i I don't quite know like the the base level we're working here for rewards it's whatever whatever an old man tabaxi would feel is appropriate for dealing with you know these shadowy shoes which depending on you know how nefarious you want them to be it could be something easy that a low level party could take care of if you just sort of reskin like, you know, some sort of animated object or, you know, other low challenge rating sort of a thing. Or, you know, if you use a different game system, then it could be, you know, something entirely different with how you have to uh, tackle the the evil shoes, if you will. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, whatever you feel is appropriate for Goob to be able to hand out as a reward. I, I think either way is good. Like everyone gets a pair of moon shoes or like, like, Oh, we don't really need moon shoes. Okay. Well, I do happen to be like an expert cobbler. I, you got some sort of, um, you know, fancy ball you have to go to, or you're about to go appear in court, uh, Royal court for someone. And you need to impress with your shoes. Well, I'm the cat for you. Uh, you'll be the cat's pajamas when you get shoes made by me something like that i don't know if he speaks in 50s lingo um <laughs> but the cat's pajamas i just couldn't resist yeah of course he he has to do cat puns right oh but... okay there's something else we learned about his character so he's old <laughs> old man who's reluctant and solitary but he can't resist a good cat pun that's that's yeah. good to know and uh, yeah i would probably you know include both you know just okay pick whichever you want you need the most mm-hmm like okay. Very, you know, impressive and elegant shoes or moon shoes. Yeah. Okay. And then we also have to consider the opposite. What's going to be the consequence of failure or refusing the call to the adventure? Mm. Yeah. Well, refusing it, my first thought is the town continues to be hunted by this creature. Actually, Here's a more funny thing. If you refuse it, an enemy will do this quest and they will have the moon shoes because they completed this quest that you didn't want it to do. Ah, the rival, know, like, party. The, yeah, rival the rival party. Yeah, the rival party does it. Mm. The rival party does it. So they get the cool shoes and then you're all, you're all like, man, I wanted cool shoes. It's like, well, the dude offered it to you and you said no, so no cool shoes for you. Yeah, I, yeah, that is, I think, just a fun way to do it. Just okay, if, if you're not gonna do this, I'll find someone else. But it's like, it's the person you, the person, the party you like the least. 
Right. It's like Gary Oak. Like, yeah, exactly. Gary Oak shows up and does it. And you're like, gosh, I hate, I hate that guy. He's so annoying. He's always having to like one up me and like prove himself. And I'm just like trying to live my life over here and do my thing. But Gary's always rubbing it in my face. Gosh, Gary. Okay. <laughs> so that that's if you refuse. But what is there a difference if there's failure? I don't know how you would fail to stop a pair of shoes. Evil shoes, menacing shoes, shadowy shoes uh, from menacing the town. Like whatever. However failure looks like. I don't know. Is there a difference there of how Goob will react to that? Mm, yeah. Maybe maybe the pair of shoes is like on a quest, on a hunt for all the pairs of shoes okay. in the town. And if you fail, then yeah, then everyone's shoes in this town get devoured. Oh, is this shoe like these evil pair of shoes like cannibalizing the other shoes in town? Yeah, I think so. And just Oh, they're, and they're... now everyone's gonna start blaming the weird cobbler. Hey, he yeah. moved here, he has magic shoes. All of our shoes are going missing. And now they're gonna turn on poor old horseradish. Ah uh, hey man, I'm just trying to make shoes. I'm not trying to make trouble. And I don't know, does it does it turn violent or just do the people run him out of town or he doesn't get any more business? They're inhospitable in his place <laughs> of business where he values hospitality. Yeah, you know, play play to find out. Like if the party can somehow clear groups his name uh, or take the blame for it. Mm. depending on how things go but yeah i I like this idea of just if if you if you ignore it then even if you just leave this town it will still come back to you mm. in the form of a benefit to like a rival or an enemy but if you try and fail then like this is just like okay now a new challenge right right this town is angry at the Ooh, and the shoes come back stronger because of the magic that's in them. Because these are weird. These are weird shoes, man. They're not like the normal moon shoes. These are like weird shoes. And the fact that they're cannibalizing other shoes. What if the shoes are like getting? <laughs> what if they're getting bigger? Maybe not necessarily <laughs> like clown shoes, but like they're just they're growing more powerful and they're getting like mean and ugly and like. Now these are like getting like scary. Like maybe they're transforming somehow like into some sort of like I I, I said Frankenstein monster. What if it's like yeah. like a like the shift, the you know, it's like the leather and the stitching and it they actually do take the form of the, the, the dog or the humanoid or whatever it is that then you could like introduce the stats for like a flesh golem or something like that. And it's like. Oh, these evil pair of shoes that you never dealt with. Now it's a flesh golem terrorizing the town. It's eaten all the shoes, and now it's gotten a hankering for like for flesh. Uh, like I'm I'm done with all the tanned leather and stuff like that. Now I now I now I need the the stuff straight from the stores. Yeah, <laughs> when you talk when you said that, the first thing that came to mind was like this very old Yu Gi Oh card that's like a burger, but it's evil and it has like teeth. And it's mm. like, what if that exact same, you know, idea, but you a pair of shoes, like shoes, evil thief and stuff. And yeah, now it's even, you know, more powerful, yeah. more dangerous. Yeah. Poor Goob is like, like trying to barricade his shop and, <laughs> you know, this flesh golems pounding on the door, trying to get in. And he's like, oh, what have I done, uh, you know, to make this thing? uh yeah i know that's terrifying uh it very uh well I, I don't know if lovecraftian is the right sort of word but it's certainly absurdist sort of horror or something like that i don't know but okay yeah i think i think those are pretty good consequences uh for uh for this particular side quest do you feel like we need to explore any of the other side uh, optional uh questions uh for this character or do you feel like old goob is good to go Oh, uh, let me check the questions here. Uh -oh. I see. 
There is a question here. What impact have you made on the world? How have you shaped the local area? Yeah. Good question. Simple. Everyone in the local area has moon shoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, he oh. helped make them in the previous area that he was. And now this town, uh, like we alluded to, if it's somewhere like a Venice or, or some other like regular town, but like everyone walks around a little bit taller and uh, they wear their dresses longer to give the illusion of everyone being taller in town. But then it's like, oh, it's because everyone's like lifting off the ground, like by a foot or something like that. So uh, yeah, everyone's having a duck in their doorways uh, because they keep hitting their heads on the top of the doors. Like, oh, excuse me. Oh, I have to bend down here. Or, uh, pe people are able to wear their shoes indoors and not worry about tracking mud or, or dirt or something in into the into the helm which is nice you can step over the threshold much easier because you're already lifted up off the ground yeah okay I, I do think it's a fun introduction right oh the party arrives in this place and and and, and people just have this <laughs> I, I, yeah like there's a lot of people with moon shoes yeah perfect okay well, it sounds like we've got ourselves a pretty awesome little guy, and I think it's time we stick him into a random encounter. This random encounter is brought to you by my sponsor, Zencaster. Zencaster came into my life when I didn't think I would need it, but now I definitely need it with trying to raise a family and a uh, keep the podcast episodes flowing and all that stuff and not trying to keep myself awake for all hours of the night, trying to get these episodes edited. Uh, thanks to Dane and Benjamin over at Dispel Magic showing me this service. Uh, I was hooked and I decided to become a paying member uh, so I could get access to all these awesome tools uh, with editing and getting these great episodes to you. So it is so easy and super easy now to record a podcast with Zencaster, you log into your browser and you start recording a high quality podcast right away. You could record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen. Knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. A hard sell. On that point alone, I would, you know, I've been podcasting for a couple of years now. That is amazing. So that is a great selling point of this service. You can sound your best. Have you ever worried what you might sound like on a podcast? With Zencaster's post-production process, it makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes the ums and ahs as you click on that feature in the post-production settings. And in your recordings, it's going to remove those awkward pauses and conversations too with the click of a button. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with a click of a button. It really is that easy. It's all in one. If you have thought about podcasting before and realized that you need a lot of different tools and services, those days are done. With Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting platform, you can create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and all other major podcast destinations. Go to Zencaster.com forward slash pricing and use my code SIDEKQPODCAST and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Again, the website Zencaster.com forward slash pricing. Use the code SIDEKQPODCAST and get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. Thank you so much to the sponsor and back to the podcast. All right. So now we're in the section of the show where we get to do a role play, a vignette, a scene with the character that we made. So Ava, I think, will do a fantastic job. She doesn't have to do an old man voice, but I think she'll do an <laughs> awesome job uh, bringing a life to Goobles Goop Horseradish, the elder tabaxi cobbler of lifting shoes. Uh, but the question becomes for me, who am I going to be in this scene? Am I going to be, uh, you know, someone from Goob's childhood giving him this name? Uh, am I going to be one of my adventuring characters getting this side quest about you know these shadowy shoes lurking around town uh or is it just going to be like a slice of life where someone from the town comes in to like get a nice pair of shoes uh made and we get to see uh goob using um and and, and working towards this uh 
hospitality that he so much values or i don't know what are you interested in i guess i guess the this the the regular citizen okay. would like do a good job of just presenting the normal life okay of groups okay perfect uh so would you like to set the scene or or would or would you care for me to set the scene uh, i can welcome to welcome to my humble shoe uh levita i i keep calling them levitating but it's it's a, a different word lifting yeah welcome to my humble lifting shoe stores are you here to pick an, uh, a new pair oh hello yes uh, good to see you master um horse radish it was yes you you can just call me goops it's ah master it's a long goop. story but that's what everyone calls me ah very good sir and you see that it is like a you know a rather nice uh you know well to do merchant sort of man and he's here uh with his wife um so it's the two of them together um, so he's like, yes, yes, okay, very good, Master Goob, yes. Um, I see all the, the people around town are, are walking proud and tall, tall, yes. My wife, uh, she has these very fine dresses. Uh, go on, dear, show them. <laughs> and she laughs, and uh, she does a twirl about in her dress, and it's like, see how long it is, but it it just drapes. It just kind of, you know, it's not unlike your lovely wedding train you had on your gown, my dear. <laughs> and he does like a, a Gomez sort of, kiss up her arm to like a morticia and he's like yes well she must she must uh you know be lifted up and so i am told that uh you are the man to do it you're the reason why all the well-to-do of this town walk around so bold and proud yes yes of course that that is a very common request uh if you i if i could just take your measurements and then and then yeah just like you know very, very professionally. Imagine like he has a uh, the measuring tape in a specific place, and then mm -hmm. yeah, and then he returns the measuring tape to that specific place, and he gets like, uh, not just like different measures of the feet, but also no, like is there is there a particular distance from the ground you would like to be? Uh, there is a a a level of wiggle room that I can adjust the shoes from. From the, about uh, a half to one and a half feet. Ooh, ooh. and so they they start like talking, and then she's like, "Well, you know, Esmeralda is always shoving into my face about how high and lofty and mighty she is. It's like, I know, dear, she's just such a pain, isn't she? Oh yeah, she just has to rub it in everyone's face. And you, my little man, ooh, and they get like they get a little flirty and and stuff like that." And so maybe again, and now I have this idea of Morticia and Gomez. So he's like, I want my wife to be the statuesque goddess that I know her to be. Yes, a foot and a half, two feet, three feet. It's a, and then she like has to calm him down. And she's like, okay, dear. Okay, oh dear, okay. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just so in love with you. And, you know, I just can't stand that Esmeralda has to be, you know, uh, making you feel less of yourself when I know you to be the shining radiant jewel of my eye. And she's like, oh, you speak such sweet poetry to me. Um, and so they're, you know, they're talking and, and, and being a cute couple and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, then he'll, the gentleman will turn to you and say, yes, a foot and a half ought to do it. Show her what for. Ha ha. Yeah. And then, and then I imagine there's, you know, a lot of, um, you know, First comes you know, measuring and all the technical stuff, and also you know asking about styles, and like, oh, is this going to be a, a pair of heels or so and such? <laughs> oh, <It's> well, just... <laughs> yeah, no, she definitely is like, oh, you know, she tells you exactly everything that she wants, and she's like, you know, to the level of detail where it's like, I, uh, you know, oh, Miss So and So had like, you know jewels on hers while well, i want like twice as many jewels or like you know she went for you know this kind of a heel well i want this kind of a slip because i'm not a fool uh you know i want my feet to be comfortable not aching in it and then that'll naturally allow me mm -hmm. uh you know to be taller rather than having to cheat and rely on like the heel uh part of it to to goose me or something 
Yeah, I I did say heel, and then I I stopped for a second there, thinking like lifting shoes with heels. How, how does that work? But and yeah, right. unless like, it just kind of like resets the ground, you know, of like you know the heel then kind of like sort of cheats you up or something like that, or you know is meant to uh, accentuate the derriere or something like that, and um, you know, so th this woman is just like you know, no, you know, I don't need to be superfluous like that i'm going to be taller because i'm already going to be like a foot and a half off the ground versus her because she's like you know maybe like a foot off the ground or something like that and you know yeah and 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 then i imagine there's also you know a whole process where like oh do you want uh, the colors and the materials do you want it mm. to match with a specific dress or jewelry Ooh, yeah, no, yeah. Like... she tells you she tells you the whole nine yards of of what she right. wants um yeah, and then he's he's just delighted, and um, you know he he's so he's letting his wife you know uh, express what she wants, and you know he's happy to pay for it, no problem. Um, but then he's looking around for himself, and then he begins to ask questions about like you know well uh, you know what what can he do for me, and so he starts seeing like maybe some of these like really rich uh, court you know like social gathering ball to do sort of shoes and. So he'll ask about those and like, oh, those should be red, you know, because those are fancy. Um, and then, yeah, this is going to carry on for a while. How long do you think like the transaction uh, would take to get the measurements and then probably like, you know, set them up for them to come back and stuff like that? Oh, I I think that Goops is like, you know, there's some clients that are like this, that are like very, they want a very specific thing. So Vids like this would take much longer, but then there's also like more common folks. It's just, I just want a pair of lifting shoes, no mm -hmm. normal. And these are often like come, uh, are quicker. And also <laughs> they probably have very different price ranges, you know, mm -hmm. right. If the, you, the, the, the rich folk who wants very fancy shoes, like he, he will make them, but they will be much more expensive than the, and the shoes made for like the common folk that just want a regular pair of lifting shoes. Sure. And then, and then, yeah, a request like this would probably take a little longer. But then, but also, if there is haste, he will you will find a way to like, okay, I, I, I can get this, I can get this done in two days. Yes, it, mm. it won't be easy. But I've, I've, I've done harder tasks before. Hmm. Yes, Master Goop. They say that you are the finest cobbler in this town. You know, and, and, and he 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 pays you this long compliment. Um. Uh. But he he pays the money up front. Uh. To get this job done expedited. Uh. And then, of course, very much in a Gomez sort of a fashion. Uh. He's just doting upon his wife. He loves her so much, and she just you know he he just wants her to be presented and shown. Uh, for the goddess that he believes that she is. And before the scene closes out, like now that this hospitality has been conducted and, and you know, the ritual complete, as it were, how is Goob uh, now reacting now that they've left the shop? I, I imagine a little bit of... See, I imagine that Goob still keeps sort of like a posture and, you know, a tidiness, even when there aren't clients mm -hmm. but um but like if somebody is present in the store that makes it clear that they're not interested in buying shoes i think goops will be much more like stern and that's like that kind of uh, uh that kind of like behavior <laughs> Uh, so there we go. We made it through the random encounter section of the podcast. So what was it like getting to be a voice uh, to Google's Goop Horseradish? It was it was fun. I don't often do voices, but if I, I did, I did what felt correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think you were uh, good and honest and, and gave a good, honest uh, portrayal of the character. Uh, yeah. 
So now is the part of the show where uh, we enter into the final thoughts section of the show. Um, so what is uh, any final closing thoughts that you want to share? Uh, and then um, any, uh, any last things that you want to plug and, and share with us and the podcast audience? I, I definitely like the, the random tables. I think that making something like from a blank paper is harder, but like having these starting points makes it much easier to go with the flow. And that's part of why I like role playing. I, I love rolling dice. <laughs> I think it's fun. Indeed. I like it when games come up with, you know, new, original, fun ways of rolling dice. Excellent. Um, and, and it was a, a fun experience. Like, like okay, I roll a bunch of dice. I have this idea. And then like, oh, okay. But now <laughs> there's this new idea, how how to adapt. And it's and that's, what, that's really what I like about role playing is just like, uh, what happens next? I don't know. The dice will decide. Oh, yes, yes. And and uh, my URL is Worst Girl Ever, no spaces. It is I am on X and Blue Sky and Tumblr too, uh, on all of these websites. And thank you for having me. It's been a great episode. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you for uh, being a guest. And uh, we will make sure to get all those socials out for you. And uh, I can't wait to have you back on the podcast, making even more interesting NPCs. Yeah. It's been a great time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sidekicks and Sidequests. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music, Overcast, or YouTube, or feel free to save the RSS feed to use the app or player of your choice. Visit our website, SidekicksAndSidequests.com, for links, write-ups of the NPCs, and to learn more about the show and the guests who have been on it. To stay up to date and interact via social media, you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram slash threads, Twitter slash X, and Reddit by searching for Side KQ Podcast. You can also find our small Discord community as well online. I would love to talk D&D and showcase your fan art, stories of how you use our NPCs, discussions, and commentary. And hey, if you'd like to hail the bard and send me a message, an email, you can do so by communicating with sidekicksandsidequests at gmail.com. To help this show be the resource it's meant to be, I ask that you leave a review on iTunes, five stars please, to help spread the word and share our podcast with your friends and family. Whether you're a veteran player or an aspiring dungeon master, there's something here for everyone and I want to hear about it. As mentioned in the NPC creations section of the podcast, I do in fact have a Patreon for Psychics and Psychquests. If you love this podcast and what we're trying to do here, I would appreciate it if you would just go to the website patreon.com forward slash Psychics and Psychquests. No matter your lifestyle expenses, we have wonderful rewards at every level of Patreon membership tier. Modest, comfortable, wealthy, and aristocratic accommodations await. And we welcome all patrons to the Levitating Platter. Seriously, your financial support allows for this passion project to continue to invest in itself through the tools that will take our production to the next level, as well as provide more content for our patrons and the community at large. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you can. Sidekicks and Sidequests is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy. We are not approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast. Copyright Wizards of the Coast LLC. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you at the pub next time. Bar to rock on one, two, one, two, three, four!